This video is a follow-up to the one that I did on the extraordinary cost that we saw when a family member had a heart attack, resulting in surgery and a four-day stay in the hospital. I covered how the astronomical over $500,000 in costs for hospital and medical charges that she experienced was handled by Medicare in that video. But one thing that often goes overlooked in Medicare cost comparisons is the prescription drug experience. My family member was kind enough to share her actual drug costs with me, so I busted out the whiteboard to show you how prescription drugs are handled with Medicare Part D coverage if you go with a Medicare supplement plan with a standalone Part D plan versus a Medicare Advantage plan with Part D coverage included. This is one example with relatively few medications, but it will give a good illustration to how drug plans work, and I'll be showing how it all works with the 2025 Medicare Part D changes that are going into effect on January 1st of 2025. Even with this major healthcare event, she only has four prescriptions to take. Atorvastatin is a common cholesterol medication that more than 92 million American adults are taking. Next is lisinopril, used for blood pressure. More than 82 million Americans are on lisinopril, which is usually taken in conjunction with metoprolol, which more than 65 million Americans are on that. Those are her three generic medications. Her fourth medication is not generic, and it is called Berlinta. Her doctors would not let her out of the hospital without this one. It is a brand name blood thinner because we can't have blood clotting around the four stents that she just got from her surgery. The very first thing to understand with medications and drug plans would be the formulary. This is a full list of covered drugs that your drug plan is willing to help you pay for. Drug plans do not cover every drug, but there are classes of medications with pretty scientifically specific names like alpha blockers, these increase blood flow and relax blood vessels. There are many other different types and brands that make up alpha blockers. Think of it as like running shoes. There are calcium channel blockers, these lower blood pressure and relax blood vessels. Think of those as maybe like hiking shoes. There are proton pump inhibitors that treat things like acid reflux and ulcers. Maybe think of those as like fancy dress shoes. So the point is that if we're treating drug plans like a shoe store, if an insurance company wants to offer drug plans, they need to carry at least one pair of shoes in every style, like running shoes, hiking shoes, fancy dress shoes, cowboy boots, sandals. I think you get the point but they are not required to carry every single brand. So their formulary may only have the shoe equivalent of Nike, Merrill, Doc Martens, to name a few. So the formulary is important, especially if you know the exact brand type of medication that you want. When picking a drug plan, make sure that your medications are on the plan's formulary. Your agent can help you with this, so can medicare.gov, which I will get to. The next incredibly important consideration is the tier of the medications. This is a way to organize all of the drugs on the formulary into cost-sharing structures. Most drug plans have five tiers. There are exceptions, but it is usually tier one is preferred generics, tier two is non-preferred generics, tier three is preferred brands, Tier 4 is non-preferred brands, and Tier 5 are specialty medications. In general, as you go up in tiers, the drugs become more expensive and your out-of-pocket cost-sharing responsibility becomes greater. Carrying on with this shoe store example for some reason, and I don't know how often you frequent shoe stores, but imagine that there is a heavily discounted rack of shoes that are like 95% off. These are generics. Then there is another aisle of shoes that are very customized with diamonds and signed by celebrities that are insanely expensive. Those are specialty medications. So using the drugs for my family member, the first three are actually tier one preferred generics on her plan. The last one is a non-preferred brand, so tier four. And let's get into the costs of how they're handled by the drug plan. I'll start with the standalone Part D drug plans that you would be shopping for if you were to get original Medicare and a supplement plan. The first cost that you need to be aware of is the monthly premium. You need to pay a monthly amount just to have the plan even if you don't take any medications. The 2025 plan costs have not been released as of the making of this video, but they will be soon. This is all about to change and absolutely blow up in 2025, but for right now, the average premium is around $35 per month. There are plans with 50 cents per month as their premium. There are plans with $100 plus a month. We're gonna go with $35 a month or $420 for the year. Most, not all, but most standalone drug plans have a deductible of $590 in 2025. You need to pay this first before the plan helps out and it is usually for drugs in tiers two and three or above, meaning low cost generic medications are often covered before you meet the deductible. So three of her four medications are tier one generics. 
The retail cost for these opens up a whole can of worms. If you're familiar with the pharmacy benefit world, you can poke holes in this. In a past life, I worked at a pharmacy benefit management company, so I get it. But to make this easier, we're going to say that each of these costs $5 a month. For you, the person on the plan, it won't really matter. She pays $0 for these even before she's hit the deductible because these are tier one generics. Some plans may have one or $2 copays for things like this, but it's very inexpensive. The one medication that is a problem child is Brelinta. The drug's retail cost is $427.07 per month on this standalone drug plan that we're using. For month one, she is responsible for all $427.07 because she has not met her deductible yet. For month two, she is responsible for another $162.93 to meet her deductible. She has now met her deductible and doesn't have to deal with this until January of next year. After her deductible, the plan has a 25% coinsurance for the tier of brand medication. So she is also responsible for 25% of the remaining $264.14, which is $66.04, bringing month two's total out-of-pocket cost to $228.97. This all started for her in July, but I'm starting in January just to show a full year. She has now met her deductible and is now in the Part D initial coverage phase for the rest of the year, where she has the 25% coinsurance off of the $427.07 build amount for Berlinta. 25% is $106.77 per month for the rest of the year. Each time it goes towards the max out of pocket. Notice that the monthly premium to have the plan does not count towards the max out of pocket. This brings her 12-month drug costs to $1,723.74, add in the $420 for the annual premiums just to have the drug plan, and we're at $2,143.74 for the drug costs and coverage. Remember, once we get to January 1st of the next year, her deductible resets, and on January 1st of 2026, she'll see the full cost of the medication again rather than the 25% coinsurance. The average monthly premiums are set to increase quite a bit in 2025. There is that $2,000 max out of pocket on drug costs. She didn't meet that here, so it doesn't really come into play in this scenario. But in 2025, the max out of pocket does limit your exposure to high cost drugs. Again, the monthly premium costs to, that you pay do not go towards that max out of pocket number. Okay, Advantage plan drug coverage is similar, but a little bit different. First, they don't have an additional premium to have the drug plan. Drug coverage is included with most Medicare Advantage plans at no additional cost. I say most Advantage plans because there are Advantage plans that do not have drug coverage. These are specifically designed for people who already have drug coverage through things like the VA or other arrangements, or they just don't want drug coverage. Again, 2025 is changing things, so you may see some Advantage plans that had no premiums start to have small premiums added to offset the costs in 2025 coming. Next, most, not all, but most Advantage plans with drug coverage do not have the $590 deductible. And for those that do, it's usually a lot less than the $590 max. Looking at the 2024 plans available in my family member zip code, there were 14 Advantage plans with drug coverage, but no deductible. And then there were six plans that did have a deductible. Of those that had a deductible, the average was $150 rather than the $590. Again, I'm a broken record here. 2025 plans have not been released quite yet, so that could change in 2025. You contrast this with the standalone drug plans where the majority of them do have that max deductible, but again, there are some that don't. So this video is covering the more common circumstances, meaning we're gonna be looking at a $0 deductible drug plan attached to an Advantage plan. Outside of these last two points, meaning the no monthly premium and no deductible, the drug plans work similarly. So on the Advantage drug plan, she would immediately be in the 25% coinsurance for this medication, skipping any deductible, and that would put her at paying the $106.77 each month for 12 months, and that total is $1,281.24. So just looking at dollars and cents here, and this one example with these four medications, the drug coverage on the Advantage plan would be $862.50 less for the year, than the standalone drug plan, but there is more to this than the dollars and cents. With standalone drug plans, you can shop different plans and prices, but more importantly, formularies and tiers. One drug plan, we'll call it the blue plan, will put a type of medication in say tier four, so you have a higher cost responsibility, where another plan, we'll call it the red plan, may put that same medication in tier three, giving you lower cost responsibility. 
but then that red plan might have a different medication that you take and they've got that in tier two. And then the other blue plan has that medication in tier one. The point is, is that you can shop standalone drug plans to find the lowest overall cost to you without needing to change your entire hospital and medical coverage through your supplement plan. With the Advantage plan, you are placed within that Advantage plan's drug formulary. When you work with an agent, you aren't just guessing at a plan. If you know your medications, you can put those in and then find plans that have the drugs covered in the best way for you. But if your Advantage plan changes and no longer has a drug on formulary or switches up tiers, if you wanna switch your drug coverage to something more advantageous, you can during the annual enrollment period that is from October 15th to December 7th of each year, but then you're changing your entire Advantage plan with medical, dental, vision, and any other benefits that are tied to that Advantage plan. With either the standalone option or the Advantage plan option, if you have an emergency like this with a new medication that you weren't planning on, you are stuck in that drug plan likely until the next annual enrollment period. This is where those 50 cent per month standalone drug plans have a little bit of a weakness. In our example with Berlinta being covered as a non-preferred brand, there may be other standalone drug plans that cover that as a preferred brand, and those individual costs will be less for you, but they may have higher monthly premiums. I wouldn't be making your drug plan decisions based on what if I get some sort of a random disease or accident in this year, meaning that if a lower cost drug plan is available to you and it meets your needs and your medications, then I wouldn't be paying more for a plan that over meets your needs in a way just because it might cover something like a heart attack better. If you're the type that wants to shop all of this yourself and do your own research, I have a video that goes over exactly how to find the lowest overall cost drug plan using Medicare.gov's drug plan shopping tool. This way you don't have to talk to an agent or anyone. You can put in all of your medications, your preferred pharmacies, and it'll show you which plan will have the lowest overall cost. That means your premium costs, plus your drug costs. This is what we as agents see and use. It is quite simple. And a big mistake that people make with drug plans is that they shop for the plan with the lowest monthly premium. Medicare.gov will sort these for you to the lowest overall cost, which again means your premiums plus your cost sharing with co-pays and co-insurance, because again, sometimes a higher premium plan will cover your specific drugs better than a lower premium plan. And while your monthly costs for the plan may be higher, it's still the lowest overall cost plan for you because of how well the medications are covered. Now I made reference to the blue plan or the red plan when giving examples around the different drug plans and tier structures. So the secret code word in this video, if you've made it this far, is either a red pill or a blue pill from the wonderful movie, The Matrix. If you throw those into the comments, then I know that you've made it this far and I can take those comments a little bit more seriously. All right, I have that medicare.gov tutorial right here. If you were watching this before October of 2000, 2024, it'll have the 2024 Medicare.gov site experience. If you're watching this in or after around October 15th of 2024, it'll have the updated 2025 site and flow. I will see you over there.